Before I begin this story is up 18 years. When you have kids around please use headphones. Thank you for your understanding. Mysterious Yeti Expedition Reinhold Messner an Austrian mountaineer had 1986 an encounter with a Yeti in eastern Tibet. He described this creature as 7 feet tall and hairy, it made a whistling noise and smelled awful. Is this creature an ape, or belongs it to a hidden humanoid species population? Are Bigfoot better known as Sasquatch and Yeti the same species? A research team is on the way to Tibet to find some answers. These creatures are really cautious and called protective. Before I continue, please don't forget to like my video and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Hit the bell to get news about new posts. I wish you a great time with my story. Lhasa Gonga Airport a plane is landing with a team of scientists. They are there to find out about the Yeti mythology. What is behind the rumors of encounters with these creatures? These scientists are coming from Austria, Swiss, and Germany. They are going to eastern Tibet to find the Yeti. The scientists are renting a van to get to the destination. The mission is to follow the traces of Reinhold Messner. He had an encounter with this species in eastern Tibet. It is a beautiful landscape with high mountains, valleys, glaciers, and rivers. The weather is beautiful but it can change rapidly. The snowstorms in higher terrain are very icy and can be life-threatening. The members of the team are Michael, Sebastian, and Christoph. Michael is from Germany, Sebastian is from Austria, and Christoph is from the Swiss. They represent the University of Munich and the project from Reinhold Messner the Yeti Expedition. They reach the destination which is a valley surrounded by high mountains between 7 and 8 kilometers high. Michael and the other team members take the equipment out of the van and build a camp in the valley. This is Camp 1 the second one is 3 kilometers over the sea level. The scientists planned four camps at the mountain. Before they climb to the second camp they are staying a few days in the valley to prepare the equipment for the mission. The target is the top of the mountain to follow the traces from Reinhold Messner in the hope to see the Yeti. After some days they have everything together and start walking to the second station. They are walking through a nice pine tree forest up the mountain. The scientist uses a way that was made for the yaks who got brought from the farmers to higher terrain. On higher terrain are many grasslands where these animals can eat grass to produce milk. The farmers stay there with the yaks to produce cheese. On higher terrain are many alpine huts where the farmers are living. Yak cheese is a delicacy and expensive. As they are 2 kilometers over sea level they have a beautiful view over the valley. The trees are getting rare and alpine plants and bushes are growing around the rocks. They are coming closer to the snow zone. The scientists continue walking after two hours they are reaching camp 2. They have to stay there until they get used to the air pressure. At night Michael wakes up and goes out of the tent. He hears something it is a whistling noise. It is snowing he can't see far but he hears something running away. He looks around and sees large footprints around the tent. With his cell phone, he makes some pictures to analyze this later. The next morning he shows these images to his team. The footprint is large like from a bear but it is different. This thing was walking on two feet like a human. They are all sure that was a yeti. 
Nobody had this creature in a camera picture but witnesses from encounters described these beings walking on two feet, long white shaggy hair, seven to nine feet tall. They look around if they can find more footprints but the snow covered everything. After some days the weather is nice to climb to camp three on five kilometers over the sea level. The scientist passes a glacier and suddenly the weather changed. It starts snowing very strongly and the icy wind is hitting their faces. Michael lost the orientation and contact with his team. He calls them but the noise from the storm is too loud. He starts freezing and gets tired, step by step he climbs up the mountain. He is in a dangerous situation he suffers from altitude sickness. Instead to go down he climbs more and more up the mountain. Michael can't breathe cause the air pressure change in higher terrain. He climbs for hours in the cold and then he falls. Michael is at the end of his strength. He hears more whistling noises and gets unconscious. Michael wakes up in an ice cave. How he came here. Then he sees them, seven to nine feet tall creatures with long white shaggy hair. The Yeti saved him, he is laying on a yak fur. Next to him is a fireplace a female Yeti with a cup or baby is standing by a clay pot and is cooking. More in the back of the cave is an animal enclosure with yaks inside. These Yetis are living like the ancient Homo sapiens. One creature is coming from there and gives him a clay cup with yak milk. He drinks it fast and feels better. Michael takes his cell phone and makes pictures of the Yetis in the cave. The female at the pot whistles and gives him a cup from that she cooks. It looks like tea it tastes awesome. Michael drinks it and feels warm and tired. Finally, he falls asleep and dreams very well. After a long sleep, Michael wakes up and finds himself in the camp back. His team members are happy that he is up. They tell him that they found him after the storm close to the camp in a yak fur. It is a miracle that he is alive after the storm. He tells them from the ice cave and the yetis who fed him and warmed him at a fireplace. Then he says that he made pictures. He takes his cell phone, he shows the pictures but all of them are dark and useless. What happened here? Is there a higher power to keep the yetis hidden? His team members tell him that was a good story. Michael is disappointed, but his team members are undecided about why he was covered in yak fur. Who gave it to him? Is the story real? After some days they continue the mission. After they climbed the mountain they are going back home without Yeti encounters, with the exception of Michael. End of the story.